Good morning, YouTube. Um, let's go through this, and without sounding utterly batshit, is um, about seven thousand years ago, we put in, we put a, we put something into the works. Maybe a little bit longer than that. It could be, you know, ten thousand years ago. Is um, but like modern agriculture practices is what I'm trying to get at. In in not like in the last two hundred, because that's where we stepped it up to just become stupid. That's like here is what I'm trying to get at. But in the old way, is they would take down swaths of land, and as they did, the earth would in, increase in temperature. As the earth increased in temperature, and as the forests are burned, it's it's critical that we don't burn forest. Okay, to just be blunt. Um, it, it needs to be composted. CO2 and methane and all that jazz is not the problem that people think it is. If you look at the forest fire in Brazil and you look at what's happening, the, as the forest is being reduced by fire, there's two ways to do it. You can reduce it with proper oxygen and then you get ash, or you can do it without proper oxygen and you're going to get what's called biochar graphene. And biochar graphene is the purest form of carbon. And hemp bass fiber graphene is even purer yet. It's quite unique. Um, but as that graphene, you can take in a negative 40 degree day, sprinkle that on ice and it will melt it. As long as it's in the, um, how to say that? The sun puts out a massive ray of radiation, uh, a spectrum. What we see as light is like one of these lines. It's just a thin, tiny amount, the visible spectrum. On each side of it, it's it's still there. You know, I mean, even though we can't see it, it's still, that's what it is. And whether that's electromagnetic or, you know, however you're saying the radiation. Um, and what it's doing to the earth and how it's heating the earth is what I'm saying. And, and, um, and as we expose the earth's mantle and the, the, the crust of the earth, taking away, stripping away the trees and getting away this, this precious air layer of humidity that's underneath it, um, the earth heats up dramatically and it's going to continue to heat up dramatically. And as we keep burning the forest and making that biochar graphene, because that's what I research with hemp, it makes it, like I said, it's an extremely special type of graphene carbon that's melting that ice up there and melting it at an alarming rate and, and so thin that you don't even got to see it. It'll, just a dusting of this stuff will melt ice in sunlight. Um, so if y'all don't realize that, that's really what's happening and it's happening really fast and we got to stop. Um, and the, the best way to stop is by planting hemp and because the trees can't regrow on their own, like up in Yellowstone, West Yellowstone, I, I, I challenge you to go there. It, it's horrific. It, it's ugly and it'll, it's appalling is what I'm saying. They, they wiped out the forest, the old growth forest, and then said it would regrow in 20 years. Well, some of these signs are back in the old, like the poles are rusted. The signs are rusted away, um, in, in the mountains where, you know, you wouldn't think that could happen as well. It's drier up there. And, and without this, this effect coming down, it's dry. The trees can't regrow. Once you whack them off, there's nothing to, to, to prime that pump again. That's where you put in hemp to make the humic layer that allows the trees to regrow. This is going to take a long time. Okay. But even to establish trees in what we're doing is going to require a lot of like terraplaning on perma, permaculture, terraplaning or whatever you want to call it. Um, because what we're doing to our globe, I mean, even, even where we're not slashing the forest completely wiped out, we're thinning them, allowing more oxygen in, putting little bitty tinder houses that are of killing dried wood instead of material like hempcrete that can't burn. Um, and so even as the forest fire burns, what we're doing is even more wrong because as our roads, as we encroach into the forest, um, we're cutting through that humic layer to drain because our cars can't ride on spongy roads. Our houses can't built, be built on spongy foundations. Um, so we drain that and we're thinning out the trees until we make a tinderbox that we can't control. We can't control the fire triangle. Um, it has too much oxygen. It has too much heat in, 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 or, you know, because there's not enough moisture is what I'm saying in all the fuel in the world. And our modern agriculture does basically the same to our water supply. As we pump our aquifers out, we got nothing left and no way to refill them 
because this is broken. And that's just that simple. We can refill them uh, in a quasi way by that contour, um, by that terrace by contour, but not near as good as having the humic layer, the um, carbonic acid in the, the calcite water that self heals these caverns up above that pushes the water down into this is what I'm trying to get at. Um, don't know y'all. This is a long video and I'm going to leave it at that. But this is our problem and it's in our making, but it's also in our fixing. Um, if we planted hemp across the Arctic, can hemp grow up in them temperatures? You bet. It's going to grow a real fast, short crop, but it will grow and it will insulate the earth. It will insulate the mantle of the earth until it can re-snow. And once it starts again and there's no more graphene on the ice, it's going to stay. Um, it, will it build big, great big glaciers again? Probably not because we've wiped out too much, too much fauna across the entire globe. Um, human mankind would have to be gone to, to, for the glaciers to ever come back. Um, but is, is it, you know, the, the glacier causing events of, of a, gla of a, like an asteroid strike, that's different than what we're facing, but we, we are causing this. We're from the time of the sea people and where they came from is the adv advent of, of modern agriculture by about 3000 years. As agriculture moved across Euro-Asia, the sea people were displaced. As we continue deforesting the, the forest and as we keep our modern agriculture practices, pumping everything out of these aquifers, raising the ocean levels, everybody on the seacoast is, is displaced. And that is how it works, y'all. Um, hate to be blunt. And, and But can we fix it? Yeah. You replace this in this humic layer like a big sponge with hemp so the trees can regrow. The trees have to be replanted too. Um, but to where they can store the water. A tree is nothing more than carbon and carbon fiber is extremely light and water. The humic layer is nothing more than carbon and water like a big sponge. And, and that is a lot of water, much more water than, than, than you can imagine is what I'm trying to get at. Imagine taking all that water out of the ocean and putting it back on land where it belongs. That's what I'm saying. And all that water out of the ocean and putting it back into the ice. Um, that's the way that we had. And we're quickly running out of that option. So, okay, guys, I'm going to put this one up. Like it, dislike it, whatever you got to do. I'm, I'm sure it's going to piss some flat pe earth people off. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I mean, we can't continue on with what we're doing. We can't keep pumping... Um, and it's not that the carbon dioxide is so bad on Earth, it stops the radon gas from the, the lower section of the mantle um, from really, you know, doing detrimental things. But when we squirt carbon dioxide high into the atmosphere, that's not so good. When we put any kind of um, graphenes or, or carbon up in the atmosphere, that's not good. That's where we're getting all the... That's where we're heating. I mean, the, the sun heats the Earth by many different ways. You know, like I said, that spectrum of radiation is massive. Um, it's not just a visible light. So, okay, guys, dropping this one where it is, and we'll pick it up later on comments and all that jazz. Talk to you. Bye.